screen going again. Okay. So, um, so what we said is this new approach is thinking of lasso and least squares together as a two-step process. We made our grid over the alphas. And so as we go through that grid of alphas, we set lasso's parameter to the alpha for that iteration. We fit lasso on the training data. And then we immediately extract the lasso coefficients from our fit model. We extract the subset of non-zero coefficients. Here, instead of using zero, I'm using one E minus five. Uh, can't remember exactly why I'm doing that. I think both would work fine. We get a, non, a set of non-zero coefficients, which is a logical array. We're gonna turn that into a subset of indices that we can then extract the features we want from our data. And then you can see that I'm immediately doing cross val store with my linear regression. And that's gonna give me uh, mean squared errors uh, for the different folds in my cross validation. And I can take the mean of those to get my cross validation for that particular alpha. And finally, we're plotting here the curve that we get of the mean squared error of the least squares coefficients for that value alpha. And now you could say the simple thing to do would be just find the value of alpha that minimizes this. And as you can see, actually, there's a whole range of them that give you the same, that give you the same um, value of cross-validation in squared error. But uh, this is, you know, this is uh, basically an improvement. And when you look at the results that you get, this works even better because now we're selecting an alpha, not just from the bias lasso coefficient, but we're selecting it based on the overall lasso plus least squares method. So, um, so this is one approach. Um, any questions on this? Okay, and then the the last, so the difference between the two approaches is the RSS bar used. Yeah, it's how we computed RSS bar. Um, here we computed RSS bar based on the bias lasso coefficients, whereas here we computed RSS bar inside this cross val score using the unbiased least squares coefficients. So lasso was only used to extract the subset. And then as soon as we got that subset, we fit the coefficients using least squares and we measured performance on the least squares coefficients. <laughs> and that works better. Okay. Any, any questions on this? If not, let me just zoom to the, the second alternative, which is in spirit, very similar, but it's implemented in a different way. And so you could, you could say, well, there's actually a small issue with this approach too. When you think about cross-validation, usually you want to make sure that the, the folds of data that you use for your design are different from the folds of data on which you evaluate your model. And that's actually getting violated here because we're using all of our data to run lasso and then select the parameter subset. And then we're using, we're splitting all of that data into test and training folds. So you could say this is not quite fair because um, you know, we're we're not really doing cross-validation in, in the right way. We're actually we're using all the data to design part of the model. And so that's not quite right. So there is a fix to that. And to do this fix, you have to use something in uh, scikit-learn called a pipeline. And it's a really nice method. It's good to know about. Basically, what you do in scikit-learn is you, you construct an explicit connection between this cascade of methods. The pipeline is basically a pipeline of different things that happen to your data. So there's two stages in this pipeline. We're going to call the first one the lasso stage, the second one the least square stage. What happens in the lasso stage is you run linear model dot lasso. Then you immediately use select from model, which basically says just find the non-zero coefficients returned by this first thing. 
So this, this whole first stage is doing purely feature selection and is throwing out the lasso coefficients. It's just using the pattern of, of non-zero lasso coefficients. Then the, the next stage says, use only those coefficients to fit linear regression. Once you construct this pipeline, you can think about it as just a single command that you can stick into grid search CV. So we take this pipe object and that's our new estimator. It's this lasso plus least squares all together. And now you can do grid search CV using that estimator. Uh, you have to tell it which parameters you're gonna use. And so in this case, our parameters are again, the alpha parameters for the lasso part of the pipeline. And then we're gonna tell it which cross-validation uh, uh, cross to use, k-fold. We're gonna tell it which scoring and so on. So, and then just like before, we run grid search cv.fit and we can make new plots. And so now what's interesting is this is versus alpha, the blue one is the cross-validation mean squared error. Unlike here, where it was basically piecewise linear, now actually it you know, has some sort of a shape to it. <clears throat> And so the simplest thing to do at this approach, at this point, would just be to say, okay, let's just find the alpha that gave us the lowest mean squared error, which would be this one. Now you could say, well, okay, that's one approach. What about the one standard error rule? You could also do that too. So it turns out that this orange bar is actually the top of the, the error bars. So you can kind of imagine that there's error bars like this, and the orange trace is the is the top of the error bar. So in this case, we have a hundred different values. So there's like, you know, that's why I'm plotting it as a curve rather than it would look like a complete mess if I use the standard error bar plot. <clears throat> so to use the one standard error rule, what you do is you find the, what we call the alpha min, which is that guy. Then you go to the top of its error bar, which is this value. That becomes your target. So this is your, MSC bar target. And then you're looking for the simplest model whose, MS, whose MSC is below the target. The key thing at this point is to notice that as you go to the right, this is where you get simpler models. Because as alpha gets larger, you turn off coefficients. And so we have to move to the right and we see that this at this alpha here, this is our alpha alpha one standard error. This is the alpha for which its mean squared error is um, you know, uh, less than the, the target. So finally, this one standard error rule would be the value you'd get if you want to use that method. And interestingly enough, when you look at the final results, this one standard error rule gives you um, the same value as this, actually. But if you didn't use one standard error rule, it would be worse. So there was actually a real benefit to doing the one standard error rule in this case. Okay, so to summarize, we have two, two different ways to do lasso and least squares together. The first way is kind of a cheating way because in lasso, in that stage of it, we're using the full data and we're doing cross-validation later. Whereas this is a more robust way where we use a pipeline to do cross-validation for the lasso plus, plus least squares all together. Um, and here's finally the summary of all these methods. Um, so if all you do is least squares and you basically you're using all, all the coefficients, this gives you the worst performance. If you do ridge regression, um, and this is between alpha, we know that doesn't do cross validation. Uh, sorry, it doesn't do model or sele uh, feature selection. So that's not gonna do very well. If you use lasso with bias coefficients, that's not very good. If you use lasso with D bias coefficients, that was that naive method. That's a little bit better. Now, if you do this lasso plus least squares, both methods are giving us a better yet results. And we didn't see the code for this, but if you do recursive feature evaluation CV, that's like the, um, I think that's the backwards elimination greedy approach. That actually gives you the same performance. If you use mutual information and you, um, I'm trying to remember what this method is, uh, that doesn't work. 
And then finally, this is the optimal method, 388072. And when you look at this, it is slightly better than all of these, but not that much better. So the, the final conclusion of all of this is that by doing feature selection, we can get a performance improvement. All these methods here, none of them are giving us exhaustive optimal performance, but they're all very close. Um, so sorry for the for ending late today. Um, why does it really matter if for higher alpha, one beta, for example, goes from 0.5 to 0.1? How is the model simpler? Um, so so I, I think I'm not sure if this answers the question, but like <clears throat> the lasso coefficients that are illustrated here are going to be much smaller in size compared to the least squares coefficients. And they're just simply not going to work as well. They're not going to give you as good predictions. So this this like artificial shrinking of coefficients is actually biasing your model. It's making it structurally, they're just they're just much smaller than they should be. I don't know if that's answering the question of why does it really matter if for higher alpha the beta shrinks. No, Professor, my question is, uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. It's when you said like- uh, This slide? Alpha, alpha min, when the, you, with the one you drew the vertical line, the next one maybe? Yeah, here, here. Okay. You said for higher alpha, the model is simpler. Yeah, yeah. So that was sort of to explain how you formulate the one standard error rule in this case. Yeah, but the question is like, how is it simpler if for higher alpha? Because just the betas decrease. So they're still oh, there. The betas. Some yeah. some of the betas could be going to zero as well. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah. you just ignore them if they're like uh, really small, like epsilon or something. Well, they 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 should actually go exactly to zero. So like as alpha uh, okay. increases, they really do go exactly to zero. Um, and just as a general, like if you're asking which way is simpler models, it's to the right is simpler, to the left is more complex. So whenever you do the one standard error rule, you have to know in which direction to travel towards a simpler model. Okay. And so that's actually kind of a complication. If you wanted to do one standard error rule for ridge regression, it's not really clear that you can even do that because I don't think you can really say the model is getting simpler as you go to the right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's the point, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, okay. thank you. Sure. All right. Any other any other questions? Okay. All right. Sorry for my internet uh, troubles um, and for uh, not being able to lecture in person today. So on Friday, we'll also uh, do a Zoom lecture. Um, apologize in advance for that. But um, and uh, yeah, also Zoom office hours tomorrow as well um, will be available over Zoom. So I'll see you guys uh, over Zoom in the next couple of days. Have a good one.